There are hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. If you counted one per second, it would take you 30 years to get to one billion. Hipparchos, the world's first astrometric satellite, was launched by the European Space Agency on the 8th of August, 1989. We were able, uh, with Hipparchos, uh, to get uh, information about the distances of 100,000 stars. Uh, those stars were very bright and very close to us, very nearby. Our uh, knowledge of the galaxies was limited to a, a small uh, surrounding of, of the Sun. A decade after the launch of Hipparchus, the European Space Agency embarked on a much more ambitious project, Gaia, the Billion Star Surveyor. Uh, Hipparchus produced an accurate map a few hundred parsecs around the Sun. Gaia will extend this in over a much larger volume, covering uh, basically a quarter of the whole disk uh, of, the, of the Milky Way. So it will also uh, it, it will measure for bright stars, in fact, all over the Milky Way. Gaia is measuring one billion stars. Now we are going farther and farther. Three, two, one, top, décollage. step that is made in those 20 years to me is, is absolutely uh, unbelievable. But it's not only making the star map of the sky, we are measuring the distances and motions to the stars. We are measuring a position of a star uh, with half year difference and the movement of this star, which is not the true movement, uh, we can deduce the so-called parallax angle, which gives us, through trigonometry, a handle to the distance. Unfortunately, things are a little bit more complicated. It's not only the parallax, but the stars are actually also moving. In fact, they observe the object many times during this mission. You observe at the star at the beginning, and you re-observe it, re-observe it, re-observe it, and you see its motion. It's because the precision of the Gaia mission is very, very, uh, very good. The, the angles that are involved are extremely small. If you imagine a euro coin, which is uh, about uh, two centimeters uh, in size, and in the case of Gaia, we go down to about 10 micro arc seconds in accuracy. And that means that you could even see uh, this Euro coin lying on the moon. We know that all the stars are moving, but to have information about uh, how they're moving will give us information also on the way in which our Milky Way was formed. It can tell us uh, how many stars uh, comes from outside our galaxy. Every day from space, Gaia sends about 40 gigabytes of data back to Earth. The data is extremely complex. A huge human collaboration is needed in order to turn it into the map of the galaxy that astronomers have been waiting for. Globally, Gaia is doing a 3D uh, map of the galaxy. But not only, it's also measuring the brightness of the objects, the colors, and for a subsample, the radial velocities. And this is a very complex task, not only because it's a vast amount of data, but also because of the uh, interwinding of the data. So if, from the same photon, you derive several different information. And this, you have this interconnectivity of the data, and that makes things difficult. Uh, at the level of the consortium, I think now we are probably about uh, 500 people. Such a project, it's more than a quarter of century from the first proposals. So you have an effort which is enormous from many people on uh, long term. But we see that Gaia has, through the first data release, a huge impact in many, many different topics in astronomy. All the people that we start working on science with Gaia, they maybe will know a word that, that we have never seen before. This data set in itself would be enough for decades of, of work. 
Gaia is a mission that uh, continuously scans the sky. It looks at everything that is bright enough for its uh, telescopes, every point source. That means it also measures uh, objects in our solar system. The idea is that at the end of the mission, Gaia will observe 300,000 asteroids and it will change completely our visions of the asteroid belt or, or um, of the nearest asteroids as well. When the archive is opening, then there will be various kind of people looking into the data. There are clearly astronomers who have their favorite star and they finally they can know what is the distance to it. But there are also people who are interested in certain types of stars, and then they want to look the whole sky. In the data, second data release, uh, we have uh, more than uh, half a million variable objects. Gaia will discover many of these new uh, variable stars, and we hope that we will detect a new uh, variable type. It's going to change completely the way in which we look at astrophysics now, in very many fields. So it's going to be really a revolution. From one billion stars, of course, there will be a few completely new type of objects that we will have to discover and to understand what they are. After Gaia, we will never look at the night sky in the same way again. Are you ready to explore our galaxy 